Hello, it's Miss Kim. Um, we're going to calculate drops per minute, or what we call GTTs per minute. Um, and this is when you are manually regulating a device when you have to calculate your patient's fluid over time. And that's, that's all that both milliliter an hour and GTTs per minute is. It's the liquid over the amount of time. Um, for this, I just use the formula. And the formula is you take all the milliliters times the drop factor. And the drop factor is always given to you. And that is the size of the tubing. Okay, And it's abbreviated as GTT per ml. It could be 15 drops per milliliter. It could be 60 drops per milliliter. It, it, it refers to the size of the tubing, and you will always be told. And then for my formula, the bottom number is your minutes. Okay, one other thing to always know, um, GTT per minute is always a whole number, whole number, okay? You will round. We will not tell you to, but you will have to round to a whole number. Uh, the reason is because you're uh, calculating drops per minute, right? Drops. You can't give part of a drop. It's either a drop or it's not, so you cannot give part of a drop. So I have few of, a couple of these problems to go over. This is actually people like GTTs per minute because so, it sort of makes sense, um, and you're just plugging things in. So for this one, um, it says you're ordered, uh, I'm not sure what that is, 125 milligrams in 250 milliliters D5W over 120 minutes using tubing calibrated to 15 GTTs per milliliter. And if you remember the formula, it was milliliters times the drop factor over all the minutes, right? So when you're looking through your problem, well, this is your milliliter. D5W is just the uh, what's in the IV bag. And D5W represents 5% um, dextrose in water. Um, the drop factor, like I said, they have to give it to you. They could call it the drop factor. They could also said they said what the tubing calibrated. But either way, it's in GTTs per milliliter. And the only other thing you need are minutes, okay? And you have 120 minutes. So you take the drop factor, 250, sorry, apologies, the milliliter times the drop factor over all the minutes, okay? Then you just go to your calculator, okay? 250 times 15 equals divide by 120. And I have 31.25, but we have to round to a whole number. So the 2 makes the 1 stay the same. Everything in front stays the same. Everything behind falls off. And our unit is GTT per minute. Okay? Oh, real quick, going back to this. Um, for this type of problem, um, if you were calculating other things, you may have needed the 125 milligram. But uh, again, for these problems, you're only looking for the milliliter, the drop factor, and the minutes. Okay. Now we got a lot going on here. So let's say we have uh, D, what's ordered is D5 half normal saline. And, and you'll never have to do math with this part. That's just what's in the bag. And again, this means what? 5% dextrose and half normal saline. Um, but what we're looking for, again, are the milliliters, the drop factor, and the minutes. So for this one, the milliliter is 50. The drop factor is 60. And the minutes are right here, right? The minutes are in an hour, right? One hour is 60 minutes. Then you do 50 times 60 divided by 60, and you would get 50 GTTs per minute. Okay. So we got a lot more, a little bit more going on here. So a uh, client is prescribed one liter of fluid over eight hours. What is the manually regulated flow rate? Now that all every time they say that, that means the GTTs per minute. Because if it was not manually regulated, it'd be regulated with a pump, and the pump is solved with milliliters per hour. So manually regulated is GTT per minute per minute. And you have a drop factor of 20. So again, let's go back to our uh, milliliter, right? Times drop factor over all the minutes. 
Well, for this one, we don't have milliliter, but we have liter, right? And we've worked with metric enough where we can convert that quickly, right? So if I have one liter to change it to a milliliter, that's a bad multiplication sign. Let's try that again. We're going to multiply by a thousand. So one liter is a thousand milliliters. My drop factor, I've already underlined it, was 20 over all the minutes. Well, I have eight hours, right? So I know that one hour is 60 minutes, so I'm just gonna multiply eight times 60, and I get 480 minutes, okay? Because eight hours is 480 minutes. I'm just gonna multiply, and usually on my paper, I just do times 60 right here is what I do. Then you still get 480. Then you just do the math with your calculator. So you've got 1,000 times 20 equals divided by 480. And I have 41.6. But for GTT per minute, you have to round to a whole number. So that 6 makes that 1 go up to a 2. Everything in front stays the same. And your abbreviation is GTT per minute. This is the only other one that can throw you off sometimes. The reason is because if you notice, when you look at it, he'd see he's administered 3,000 uh, milliliters D5W at 125 milliliters an hour, and the drop factor is 15 GGTs per mil. Here you're given two milliliters. What you care about, this is, like I said at the very beginning, this has to do with liquid over time, right? The amount of liquid over time. This right here, just states what the whole bag is. You've got a whole bag, an IV bag, has 3,000 milliliters. But what you care about is that that liquid is going into your patient at a rate of 125 milliliters per hour. Okay? So the milliliter is the 125. You do not use the 3,000. That's just what's in the bag. So you take the 125 times the drop factor over the minutes. And again, for this one, we have minutes, and this time our minutes says hour, so that's just a 60. Calculator, 125 times 15 equals, divided by 60 equals, and I have 31.25. So when we round to a whole number, we should get 31 GTT per minute. So that should help you out with GTTs per minute.